because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Barry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm just off the plane. I'm just out the shower. Sam Jones has got his cup of tea. How are you, my man? Cheers, Andy. Cheers, I've got a bottle of water, brother. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Uh, I'm good, mate. I'm, I feel great today, mate. I feel really well, happy. Let me, let me just break down. You feel great because, obviously, you, you're close with Chantel. You, you always said that Chantel would win. We were going to touch on that, but I do want to touch on something else. See you next fight week. You taking me out for dinner with your winnings on that Shepherd Wednesday bit? <laughs> yes, mate, hundred percent. We'll go for dinner, mate. We'll go for dinner on me. Yeah, that was um, that was that was a good bet, wasn't it? That was a, that was a serious bet. Break down the bet if people haven't seen it. Break it down. No, I just I told uh, Josh Windass in my mate place Wednesday, and I said to him, I said, "Listen, you're gonna win." 5-1, they were 4-0 down. You're going to win 5-1. It's going to go to penalties, but Wednesday are going to, going to go through. I put 100 quid on it. I got 1,700 back, which the odds weren't great, to be fair. They should, I think I should have got much better odds, but I fancied it, and I actually really did fancy that to happen, and it did. My boxing tips have been good this week as well, Andy. I've got to be honest. The bookies don't like me this week. They don't like me. Sam, Sam, Sam. You're the, you're the, it's as if you're the man of knowledge. Uh, no Spencer Fearns called the knowledge, but we, we might have to change it to you. Listen, you get, listen, there's people in boxing, you know, in sport in general, that are so scared to give their opinion in case they get it wrong. Like, we all get it wrong every now and again. We all get it very wrong. I picked Ryan Garcia to beat uh, Tank. I wasn't confident, but I picked that. But this week, I picked Chantel to beat Katie. I picked Haney to beat Lomachenko. And on the Wednesday, listen... It's sport, mate. It's sport. Anything can happen. But I was always confident in Chantel beating Katie. The Lomachenko one, which we'll go into, I actually think Lomachenko won that fight. So my bet shouldn't have been correct, but it is. I'll take it. Well, let's talk about Chantel Cameron. I was there last night. Um, what an atmosphere to start off with. I mean, I mean I've been at loads of events with great atmospheres, but the Irish just do it different, man. They sing. Then they're just constantly singing yeah. no matter what. Um, but yeah. Chantel Cameron, for you, you you said to me year, a couple of years ago that Chantel will beat uh, Katie Taylor. And again, you, you weren't wrong. Now, I do want to pick on something. Uh, two parts to this question, obviously. How did you score the fight? Because I saw your, your comment to my post on Eddie, my Eddie Hearn interview. It sounded like you didn't agree with his, uh, his six points no. draw. Listen, he had. I'll let Eddie off there because he had Conor McGregor breathing his beer breath all over him last night, and the screaming Irish fans. Who, by the way, and I'm not just saying that they're probably the best fans in the world. The Irish, they are unbelievable. I was getting so much stick from him last night because I was backing Chantel. But listen, Mick Conlon's my guy. He's fighting next week. He'll be an Irish world champion next week. So relax, don't worry. But um, Chantel beat Katie Taylor in every department yesterday, Andy. The fight, this is what people don't, some, some people don't realise in boxing. You can have competitive fights, which it was, yeah? But they can also be one-sided. It was a competitive one-sided fight in Chantel's favour. Mm. She had the, the, the best in all the exchanges. She had the last say in all the exchanges. Her jab was fantastic and her body work was fantastic. She was the better fighter. The biggest, stronger girl won on the night. I know we laugh and talk about Carl Froch and too big, too strong, but that's what it was, Andy. She was the better fighter in every single department. She outboxed her, she outfought her. She, just, she, she was just a better girl on the night. But Katie Taylor is the greatest female fighter of all time. It's not just about what you do in the ring, it's what you do out the ring, how you carry yourself. And for what she's done for boxing in general, it, she's, the, she's the greatest. And that will never change. But she's 36. Chantel's in her prime. Um, I still think Chantel would have beat her at any version of Katie Taylor. I've always said, I've said it for years. And listen, Chantel got her moment. I thought the scoring was still stupid. Like someone scored it. Never. Chantel was a clear winner, Andy. I don't care what anybody says. The right person won the fight. And the same thing will happen in, in, in a rematch. 
Let me ask you this then. When David Diamante read out the first scorecard, which was 95-95, you were... Of course she was going to get robbed. TV. Well, that's what was going to be my question. What were you thinking? Yeah. I thought she was going to get robbed. I, be honest, I'll be honest with you, even before the fight, I was chatting to Jack. Uh, Jack Catcher, I was like, Jack, I hope we don't see a repeat of what's happened. Because I was so confident Katie would not beat Chantel. I was honestly just so confident in it because I was thinking Chantel throws more punches. She's the heavier handed of the two. And she's so fit and strong, Chantel. I just thought there's just no way Katie can beat Chantel. I'm not even saying that. Like I thought, but I thought to myself, if it is remotely, if it's com if it's competitive, which it was, I thought. She might struggle to get a decision, but I was so happy when 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 she got the verdict because the right person won the fight. She was it was a special. And let, let me tell you something, Andy. People talk about Brits winning away. What are the best performances by a Brit on it, it, on a way in away soil? You're looking at one of them yesterday. She's gone there and she's beaten the best female fighter of all time on her homecoming. In a hot, there was nobody there. Chantel had probably a, a dad there. Few, and a few close family members. Other than that, the whole arena was for Katie Taylor. And for Chantel to Cameron to, to go in that arena like that and put on that performance, give her some fucking credit now because she's number one. Obviously, the rematch, uh, I think Katie's going to activate it. But when I was speaking to Chantel last night, it was almost as if she she didn't want the rematch. She wanted to go on maybe... To face somebody to, to go up and become a two way undisputed fight for McCaskill's belts or come down and well she when she mentioned Katie she said I'm gonna go down to lightweight and take her belts because everyone's fighting me for my belt so I'd I'd rather go up and go down so what's your thoughts on that? Sometimes sometimes Andy right as I say it's it's fresh you only get a camera putting you a microphone putting your face it's fresh sometimes the win is worth more than the belts. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, I'll compare, I won't compare this in two different things, but Floyd Mayweather, when Floyd Mayweather boxed, it doesn't matter if there, was, if there was belts on the line. You're fighting Floyd Mayweather, and that's Katie Taylor in women's boxing. You're fighting Katie Taylor, the, the, the biggest star in women's boxing, yeah? Mm -hmm. One of the biggest stars in boxing in general. Forget women's boxing. One of the biggest stars in boxing, but definitely the biggest star in female boxing. You've gone into a backyard and beat her. People will remember that. You understand what I mean? People will remember that. Now, for Chantel to go, and, Chantel to probably deplete herself in weight and go down to one, three, five, and give her half of a chance of of of, of winning. No need. I think as long as the deal is fair for Chantel, whether it's I hope it's I know. Listen, Matchroom have got to do what's right by both of them to generate the most money. But I just think that it should be more favourable in Chantel's favour now because she's the champion. She's defended the belts. All that walking out first is, is nonsense. She's the champion. She should have walked out second. But I want to see more turns in Chantel's favour in the rematch, wherever, it, wherever the fight takes place. But she deserves maximum credit. But as I, like I say, hats off to Katie Taylor. She could have boxed anybody yesterday and got away with it for a homecoming. But like what I said, I've just said, I've just said there, Eddie's a clever guy, right? And he, he, Katie Taylor's like a big, she's a cash kind of human. I think, yeah, I'm not going to speak on this, but I think Eddie's always known in the back of his head that Chantel would beat Katie, genuinely. He will never admit this, by the way, but I genuinely think he thinks that that would have happened, which is the reason why he's never pushed for that fight. And when Sha Katie called Chantel out on, to, on Instagram, he'd have gone, no, no, no. And yeah, that, that, that's, it's played into Chantel's hands and it was fantastic. But regardless of that, how great was that event last night? What an atmosphere. The fights were great. The show was great. I loved it, mate. And I can't wait to see more shows happen in Dublin. I know it never really went in the, favor, in the way of the, uh, of the Irish fighters, although there was a few... There's a few upsets last night, but listen, regardless, that kind of crowd deserve big time boxing. And I hope it comes back very, very soon um, to, to, to Dublin because the fans, th those amazing fans deserve it. Yeah. What I will say about the fans is, even with the Dennis Hogan loss and then Gary Cully and then 
Katie Taylor, they were still singing to the end. They they, they never uh, they never left. Uh, they stayed. Well, for fans. And they, uh, listen, it was packed. It was probably well over three quarters full. And uh, about I watched seven it from seven o'clock. About six, seven from o'clock. Se- Unreal. That's what the thing is. This is what I'm saying. Like we 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 talk about like what's good. That's so good for boxing, Andy, to see um to see crowds full from like the undercard. Like, do you know what I mean? When Carty walked out, it was fantastic for him. Do you know what I mean? Like he was the first um on the on the uh, on the main board, card. Yeah. And th- there were so many people there. It was absolutely uh fantastic. He walked out to Mick Conlon's song. We're looking forward to his really? yeah, really? yeah, yeah, come out to that. It was fantastic, Mick, the whole thing. And regardless of the results, it's gonna be great to see more. Big time boxing coming back to um coming back to Ireland because again amazing amazing fans. Right, can I flick you over to Las Vegas? Um, last yes. night uh, again your bet came in. You picked Devin Haney, but you said to me there bef- uh, at the beginning of this interview that you thought that Loma had won. Um, yeah. Just talk to me about the fight then. Yeah, I scored it. I can't remember now, but. I, uh, 115, 113. I think I scored it 115, 113 to, 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 to Loma. Um, I, I saw lots of outrage saying it was a massive rob. I, I didn't see it that bad. Do you know what I mean, Andy? I mean, I know the judge, Dave Moretti, scored round 10 to um, Haney, which is, let me tell you this now, Andy, you don't have to have any boxing knowledge to watch that fight and realise that Devin Haney didn't win round 10. Mm. It's just, com- he should be removed from his position on the spot from, from, from for bollocks like that. I mean, you saw what happened last week in Vegas with the Romero stoppage, which is the worst stoppage I've ever seen in my life, by the way. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. But Ramirez. I saw it as a close... Uh, yeah? uh, Roly, Roly Romero. And, uh... Roly Romero last week. Yeah. Well, awful. But going to the, the Lomo Haney fight, I saw it as a close fight, but... I thought Lomachenko was a was a clear winner in my in my opinion. I was what I've still not watched the fight, but I've watched little highlights here and there from snippets, and I'm I'm going to probably watch it uh, after this interview. But to see Loma break down in the changing room, we've not seen that emotion from Loma yet, which is it's is hard. Kind of heartbreaking. It's hard because you Lomachenko and. He's never really brought in a huge crowd, has he, Lomachenko? Like, like that huge, huge crowd. So he's one of them fighters where you're thinking, why would I want to fight Lomachenko even now? Because he's still class even now. I know he's getting on a bit, but he's still class. It's the same thing with Devin Haney. If Devin Haney moved up in weight and he had no belts, who's fighting Devin Haney? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's one of those ones. So it's like... Loma had to win last night. Loma had to win last night. And I believe he did win. And I think he's been, he's unfortunate not to have got a decision. I don't think it was an out and out robbery because I could see some cases. I saw a few rounds that were very subjective, but I just thought Lomachenko won that fight. I did. I really did think he, he won that fight. And I'm, I'm sad for him because I want him, even though I picked Haney to win, I wanted Lomachenko to win. And I'm like, I'm open about it, even though that's, oh, yes, I got it all right. But I wish that I wish it was wrong because I thought the the wrong man won 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 the fight. And if they're trying to put him with Shakur Stevenson, oh dear me, that's mm. not going to end well for Devin Haney. Well, that was going to be my next question about Shakur Stevenson. No, stay. With, listen, I shouldn't be saying, but I'm saying that like, if I'm Team Haney, um. As I said, I tweeted this morning. Remember, Adrian Broner said, "Take the L out of love, or it's over, brother." It, it, that's mm. that's what that would happen in that situation. So I'd go go a different route. That's the route top rank want to take you. I'd... Thank Davis. <laughs> um, they're all hard fights. I mean, listen, let's be truthful about it. Cambosis was a fantastic fighter. He still is a fantastic fighter, but. Devin Haney fighting Cambosis for those belts. He kind of got a bit of a, a touch. Do you know what I mean, Haney? And he, he's kind of... He well won the fights, by the way, but he had a bit of a touch because I think he could have fought more difficult people for the belts, if that makes sense. And um, I just think... I don't know. I, I don't know. I think... 
I want to see all these guys fight each other. You know, the Javonta Davis, Haynes, and like the, all, all of these, all of these fights happen. Let's 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 see all the let's see all the big boys fight each other. But I just think Shakur is that much better than everybody. At one three five, no one's beating Shakur in my opinion. It's a tasty division. I like the the one three five division. Great division. Great division. Um, one one final one. Then I do want to get your comment. I think Bob Aaron made the comments of. Uh, American fighter, an American referee, and three American judges in the Loma fight last night. Uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. Was, was Loma up against it straight off the bat? Only in boxing we have these kind of discussions, Andy. It should, it should have just. It, I just wish, like sometimes we wouldn't. That's why it's better when fights end in knockouts because it's con- you, you get a conclusive winner. Mm. Do you know what I mean? We shouldn't be talking about. Judges and Dave Moretti clearly just being sheer incompetence or whatever you want to call it about scoring of fights. We shouldn't have this this discussion. I'd still like to see ex fighters be the judges in fights, Andy. I really would. I would like to see ex fighters, someone that's been in the ring. That's see me. Forget me. I'm talking about because I'm just as I say, I'm a manager. I, I like to give my opinion, but. I want to see somebody that's been in the ring, sit at ringside and 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 um, write down scores on their cards because I just think the, the, the state of the judging worldwide isn't great in boxing, and I just think that introduction of ex fighters would be would be fantastic. But that's just my opinion, and everyone loves your opinion. It seems nowadays, Sam. That's what. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did see one final one, but I will say this: Jack Carroll next week. Are you excited? I can't wait. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've got an imminent arrival of my my baby daughter, so hopefully she comes safe in the next couple of days, so I can get down to Manchester and be with Jack. Because again, it's been a long old process with Jack getting him getting him back um, where he needs to be. Uh, I cannot wait, Andy. I cannot wait to see Jack back, and then. Jack puts on a good performance on Saturday, and they are some massive fights for him. There are some there's fighters moving up, big names moving up to the 140 division. Um, there's the rematch with your mate over there, um, Josh Taylor. There's Re- Lopez. Regis Progre. Regis, 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 Progre. Regis listen, Regis Progre is the fight Jack specifically wants. Hmm. Jack said that, so um, I know he's got a fight coming up in uh, in New Orleans. Um, looking forward to watching that. I know he's. Um, Paro pulled out, didn't he? Injured, so hopefully he gets a, a good replacement opponent. And uh, listen, we're ready to we're ready to get it on next. It, as I say, job to do on on Saturday. And he's got to he's got to look good doing it. And uh, then we move on to massive fights. Andy, are you coming down? Are you coming down to Manchester, Jack? Uh, Andy, I might be me. I'm I'm going to see. I'm, I'm, I'm it's either Belfast or Manchester, but I think I'll probably prefer. Manchester. Yeah, yeah. Mick, oh, Mick, 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 do you know what? I'm actually gutted. I can't be there for for Mick. Um, good pal of mine, Mick Conlon, and I fully back him to become world champion. And um, it's going to be an emotional night in Belfast for him because it's going to be huge, mate. When he wins, when he wins that, which I have full confidence in doing it. And I'm to say I'm sore. I can't be there, but I'll be uh, checking it on my phone. I hope he wins as well. To be honest, I hope he does win win that world title. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, listen. Thanks again, as always, Sundays. I mean, you've probably got better things to do with your pregnant missus and that. Cheers again, Sam. I've not got a cup of tea today. I've got uh, some water, but that'll work. Uh, and, and as always, man, if I see you next week, I'll see you next week. But if not, um, until the next Thank time. Thank you. Just... Is that the boy? See where he is. <laughs> I'll just keep you entertained. Hey. Say hi. Hello. Say hello. You gone shy? Like his dad. Like his dad. Bye bye. 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 because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Harry. It must have been about 17, 16, 17.
We nick their guilt ring. Right, the bouncer's guilt ring. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 